By an unspecified point in 2667, the Johnny Green, a Venture-class Terran Corvette, had spent two years on picket duty in a low-priority region of space that bordered the Terran Confederation in the Kilrathi Empire. Her long mission had led to a number of interesting field refits unique to the Johnny by the Chief Engineer, in order to keep her in fighting condition. The most important of these being two retrofitted Kilrathi engines, and a rear-facing turret. This was in addition to the regular armament and capabilities that a standard venture had. But now, she and her crew were finally returning to the Confederation base at Xanadu for both a long-deserved refit and some R&R time respectively. A recent scuffle with a Kilrathi ship had critically damaged their oxygen fusion reactor, a key component of the ship's life support system that required a return to base to properly restore to working order. However, fate would conspire against the Johnny's crew. While en route to Xanadu, the Corvette received orders to divert to another system called Hilo. Upon their arrival, the captain of the Johnny Green, Macmillan Harcourt, would be briefed on the mission he and his crew were to undertake an intelligence gathering operation to the Kilrathi held system of Vukar Tog. Vukar Tog was a mystery to Confederation intelligence services, as the system itself had no significant natural resources, and its position among the jump lanes between Confed territory and Kilra made the system practically worthless as any sort of back door into the Kilrathi homeworld. But, this seemingly low value system was regularly guarded by Kilrathi cruiser and several wings of fighters which was a significant military investment by the Kilrathi Empire that would typically be reserved for more important systems. So why did the Kilrathi want to be sure they guarded this Sivar forsaken system so heavily? Confed wanted to know. Any mystery that the enemy was hiding could only be to the detriment of them. Captain Harcourt agreed, and would begin preparing his ship and crew for the mission, but once they had some time to relax and recover using Hilo's amenities of course. For this mission, the Johnny Green was outfitted with a series of ship-mounted cameras to record Vukar Tog's surface at a high enough resolution to capture whatever was happening on the planet, but this equipment required a mission specialist to be properly used. As such, a lieutenant commander named Ramona Chekova would be assigned to the crew for the length of the operation. One month after their departure from Hilo, the Johnny Green entered the Vukar Tog system to begin their mission. There was just one problem. The Kilrathi ships that Confed had noted earlier in their intelligence reports were arranged in a way that made any planetary approach suicidal at best. The only option Captain Harcourt saw was to retreat into a nearby asteroid field, and power down their ship to better blend in with the interstellar rocks to buy time to analyze their situation, and hopefully find a way to carry out their mission. Unfortunately, every idea the crew could come up with was dismissed as unfeasible, or projected to have a laughably low chance of success. But fate would throw a curveball yet again while they were hiding among the asteroids. One of the crew noticed the shape of another Venture-class Corvette silhouetted against the son of Vukar Tog. Another Confed ship? Of the same class the Johnny Green? The captain came to only one conclusion, and he did not like it. Confed had kept he and his crew in the dark about how many times this simple recon job was attempted. Commander Chakova confirmed Harcourt's suspicions. And this was actually Confed's third attempt at trying to find out what the Kilrathi so closely guarded on this otherwise barren planet. Attempting to ascertain the fate of their comrades aboard the other corvette, the Johnny Green moved closer to investigate. The ship in question was the TCS John Bunyan, her crew all dead at their stations and the hull turned into Swiss cheese after a desperate flight back to the jump point out system. Finding the wreckage proved one thing to the crew. If they were going to avoid the fate of their predecessors, then they were going to need a radically out-of-the-box solution. Again, ideas came and went between the crew until Commander Chakova met privately with Captain Harcourt, where she then proposed her plan. Taking the camera equipment outfitted onto the Johnny Green, they could instead be fitted onto the wreckage of the John Bunyan. Then, the Johnny Green would tow the Bunyan to build up enough momentum towards the planet for the wrecked corvette to move on her own, into a slingshot course around Vukar Tog that would allow her to end back the asteroid field again. While the Bunyan was moving towards the planet, the Johnny would attack a nearby supply convoy in the system, which would distract the Kilrathi ships and theoretically allow for Chakova, who would be aboard the Bunyan, to take the digital images of the planet's surface she needed. Afterwards, the Johnny Green would withdraw from the attack and head back to the asteroid field. 
There, under attack by Kilrathi fighters, she would pretend to suffer critical damage and be dead in space. When the Kilrathi would give up watching the dead Corvette, the Johnny would pick up Chikova nearby and proceed out system. It was insane and suicidal. Captain Harcourt balked at the idea, but faced with few options, it was the only plan that had any chance of success. Soon after, the plan was set into motion. The John Bunyan was carried out on a slingshot course towards Vukar Tog, and the Johnny Green split off from her sister ship to attack the Kilrathi. The ruse had worked, so far. The Kilrathi guarding the planet had taken the bait and were soon distracted by the attack of the Johnny. It seemed they were completely unaware of the other Terran Corvettes speeding towards their planet. Once close enough for the camera system aboard the Bunyan to properly capture the topography of the planet, Commander Chikova began poring over the visual data. At first, all she found was desert, mountain ranges, and more desert. But on the verge of disappointment, she found a curious, artificially made object. Zooming into it for a closer look, this object was in actuality a castle. A lone Kilrathi castle standing out amidst the desert sands. Compared to the vast emptiness of the planet, this must have been what the Kilrathi had been so keen on protecting. Whatever this castle meant to them, must have been of high value indeed, which could also make it a potent target of opportunity for Confed. But as she contemplated what she was looking at, a lone Kilrathi ship had broken off from the main fleet and was on an intercept course for the Bunyan, and without any form of defense or ability to maneuver, the battered corvette was easy prey. But before the end came, Chikova made sure to transmit her photo surveillance data to the Johnny Green. With it, they could escape to tell Confed Intelligence what exactly was out here in Vukar Tog. In the end, Commander Chikova's sacrifice would not be in vain, as the Johnny Green would eventually manage to make it back to safety. Little did the surviving crew know, but the success of this mission would pave the way for Operation Backlash, the name of Admiral Bainbridge's high-risk gamble to put the Confederation Navy back on even footing against the Kilrathi fleet and prevent a slow yet seemingly inevitable defeat at this stage in the war. Of course, those who know their history know that Operation Backlash was what led to the TCS Tarawa's do-or-die raid on Kilra itself. But the events of that is another story. <laughs>